doing some repairs on this 293 steam locomotive. Uh, there's a couple things wrong with this one. One is the plastic insulator on these couple drivers were cracked. This one was just split right here, but it didn't come separated. I have another one that's separated, and I have to get uh, a wheel puller yet. I don't have one so that I can pull it apart and repair it. But to repair one of these, all you should have to do is put a drop of super glue on the joint where it's cracked. You can see the little line there. It's already put some on and it's drying. And then this one, is, there's kind of a chunk out of it. I just reinforced it with a bit of super glue to keep it from separating further. This one's not bad enough to justify me pulling it all the way apart because it's not separated fully. It's just loose a little bit. So the super glue, I'll let that cure and then that should um, keep that from falling apart further. The next thing I have to do on this locomotive repair is actually on the tender. Uh, this truck side frame has broken off and needs to be replaced with this piece. Now this is a bit tricky to do so I'll probably end up doing some of it off camera. But what will have to end up happening is that this side frame will get glued back on. Normally these are pressed on when they're built from the factory. You can see it won't just snap back in place. You actually have to, yeah, there's no way to snap it in because there's ridges in the, in the edges, there's notches that it has to lock into place and they mate with this. But the only way to do that is to press it in when it's soft. You can't just press it in. So I believe what I'm going to end up doing is actually filing down the edges of the side frame just slightly and then I'm going to super glue it and then I will let it cure and uh, we will come back and see how well it stuck together. I did that successfully on one of my other freight cars so we'll see how it goes on this. Okay I'm going to attempt to do this in real time on the camera. It's always a bit trickier for me to do these repairs on camera than off camera but we'll do my best here and see if we can get it to work. So I actually filed this edge down. You can see it's a bit shinier in here. Just a teeny little bit and that'll allow this to snap in place. What I'm going to do is put super glue all over it and then I'm going to put the wheels in. These actually will go metal side up which will be a little tricky. And then or what I might end up doing is gluing it on and then putting the wheels in. You want to use a lot, but you don't want it running all over the place. Gluing this on, in this case, more is better. Also, I'm going to put some glue on these tabs on the truck frame and some here. Well for now I got the wire repaired and it's just held on by a piece of tape. I have, have to come up with a little bit better solution for keeping that in place. Perhaps just a dab of hot glue actually might be very effective in this situation. So, but I'll do that later. Next thing I'm going to do is put the brushes in. And in theory I could see if this actually fires up. Nice, that actually went together really quick. I finished the repairs on the 293 steam locomotive. Now I brought it over to the track to test it out and see how well it runs. Got her hooked up to a train.
Well, that didn't work. As you can see, my repair of the centered iron side frame has failed. So I get to start over. <clears throat> it's cold outside. It was seven below zero this morning. All right, so what I have to do, and actually what I did also do, which I didn't do the first time, is that the uh, side frames were bent. So I straightened, let's see, I use my pointer. I straightened this side and I straightened this side below this um, spring pickup. When you bend these, you don't want to bend it just by bending the side frame like this because you will break it off. So you will want to bend it with a small pliers only here and here. These were bent so it wasn't contacting it squarely. That's why it broke off. It wasn't getting full contact of the adhesive. So what I'm going to do is try this again with JB Weld. Epoxy would probably work as well, but JB Weld is epoxy with metal in it, so that's what we're gonna do. This is not going to take much. I don't want to, hopefully don't waste any here. Well, the hardener has hardened. Can't get the cap off. Oh, that's too much. Now, it would be a mistake to put this together and forget the wheels. So I'm going to move the camera over it a little bit. Okay, so I have put the JB Weld on and it's clamped and it has to cure for four to six hours, well, four to six hours to set and overnight before putting to use. So this is going to be done tomorrow. Well, it's the next day and it looks like the repair was successful on my truck side frame. So I'm going to reassemble everything and take it back over to the track. Now this is the tender that has the five wire harness. So I can't fully detach it from the locomotive to work on it. And I'm going to oil everything before I put it over on the tracks. One thing I noticed is that this axle does not have nearly as much left to right play as the front one. And the rear truck, which is still correct, has a substantial amount of left to right play. Hopefully that will not be an issue on my layout. We'll take it over there next and see how it goes. It's stuck in the tunnel.
All right, we're gonna take this for one more spin around the inside loop. The reason I switched it to the inside loop is because the inside loop runs on AC and the reverse unit gets stuck if I run it on the DC loop. It will operate, but just barely. The motor works fine on DC or AC. The other reason, the other thing that I did to this is after I had repaired the tender, and I think I had discovered the reason why those side frames fell off, and in fact the rear one is a bit loose, is because this particular model had uh, metal pickup sliders attached to the trucks. And while it's a good idea for better conductivity and electrical pickup, the rear one was actually getting hung up on the switches as it would go past and it would spark and just cause a lot of extra drag. So I just went ahead and removed the one on the rear truck. The front one isn't causing any issues right now. So let's uh, take it for a spin and it actually runs a little bit better now. So here we go. All right, that is it for the 293 repair. It took way longer than it originally anticipated because of other things getting in the way and happenings, and now it's finally repaired and ready to go back into service. This engine has a good working smoke unit too, but as you can see, it's not putting out any smoke, and that's because I'm out of smoke fluid. If any manufacturer wants to send me smoke fluid to review, I'd be happy to do that. You can send me an email to mygrandpastrain at gmail.com. And thanks for watching.